Hey, this is Jason Morris with the Facebook group Real Estate Agents That Really Work, and I'm, I'm on the phone today with um, with the hardcore closer, Ryan Stuman. Um, Ryan, I, you know, I'd love to tell everybody about you, but God, I don't know where to start. There's so much, man. You got books, you got training, you have a 40,000 person Facebook group. What, 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 what do you want to say about yourself? What do you want to, how do you want to introduce yourself? Well, you know what's crazy is uh, just a couple of days ago, uh, somebody that is in my inner circle sent me a message. They're like, hey, have you seen this Facebook group growing really fast? And you and I were chatting. I didn't put the two. They invited me to the group, and you guys let me in there. I didn't put two and two together until you just said that intro, that that was the group that you're the admin of. And so that's, uh, that's pretty damn cool, dude. So <laughs> like, oh, what, what impeccable timing. So uh, uh, yeah. first, I, I, am a, I am a man of coincidence. I guess we'll say that just first and foremost and get that out of the way, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, it's been uh, – I mean, Facebook's fantastic. I mean, and honestly, Ryan, um, the thing that, like, helped me build my group and has been building my audience like crazy is is watching you build yours and looking at – I mean, reading the stuff in your book. I mean, I read uh, – I just read Elevator to the Top, and I started greeting every person with a private message that joins the group. You know what I mean? And um, it's created a lot of interaction between me and the new people that are coming in. And um, until you get to thirty-five thousand people, man, it gets a lot to keep up with. Because right now, like where we're at, we're thirty-five, and we grow by about five or six hundred people a day. And uh, shit, there's no way we can message all those people at this point. We just like oh my god, wild. Uh, but that's what we used to do. We, I've only had that group for two years too. Uh, but in the last two years, you, you asked me to introduce myself, and we just started talking like old friends here. But uh, in the last two years, my company that I own, Hardcore Closer, uh, have gathered over 125,000 fans on Facebook just in the last 12 months. And uh, in the last 24 months, we went from uh, the, the starting a brand new group on Facebook to having, uh, we'll be probably by the time you publish this stuff, man, somewhere around 40,000 people. And, and it's not that I just started this company and it's like, oh, check out the golden board here. What happened was I've been <laughs> thinking it wasn't my hat off for the last six years, uh, doing various different uh, online training stuff. And then finally, there's, there really is a tipping point. Just like in your real estate business, you start off slow and you work your ass off for a couple of years. You build up a referral network. You get a few people that send you deals. You start building a solid pipeline and there's a tipping point where you start consistently making six figures and seven figures a year in real estate it was the same for my business. Now, for real estate, you can typically do that in about six months. In my business, it took about four years. But the last yeah. two years uh, have been like a, a, uh, a pretty really, a really strong growth curve, and especially the last 12 months. Uh, and been, I think as far as I know, I'm the number one followed sales trainer for real estate and mortgage people uh, on the Internet period. So I don't think that there is another trainer for real estate mortgage people, the Tom Ferries, the Todd Duncans, the, the any of those guys. I don't think any of them have the same following I do. Now we, oh no, I train, I train people in the car industry and, and insurance and stuff like that too. But we started off in mortgages and real estate, and I don't think there's anybody left that we haven't already passed in uh, popular to them. <laughs> Man, well, the, the thing I liked about your books, and I, I know this, uh, we didn't plan to talk about your books. I was planning to talk to you about other things, but the thing I liked about your books is you have stuff in there, real strategies that, man, you can read the book, and there's stuff that you can start doing today in there to help you grow your business. I mean, it's not a $10 book that's, you know, I mean, it's real stuff, man, and it's stuff you guys are doing, and I can tell you a lot of it I'm doing, and it works. And I'm not trying to sell your book, <laughs> but uh, well, when you had it on sale for a dollar the other week, everybody that didn't buy it was stupid. I mean, um, yeah. Well, we had 500 people buy it that day, so there was a few people that took us up on it, which was nice. Uh, and I really don't make any money from those books, but here's how I operate, man. You know, I've bought damn near every course, been to every internet guru. I, I still do. I still pay people all the time. I had the Fred Kern's house next week. I just paid JT Fox fifteen thousand dollars yesterday. Like, I never stop learning. The one thing I've learned from all these people is, like, what I want. And the reason why I write books and do courses the way that I do is because nothing's worse than you go somewhere and then you're like, oh, that's a bunch of cool theory. Like, how the hell am I going to put it into action? I wanted to give people more of a, okay, here's what you do type of setting. Like, not a hypothetical or here's what we've done. It's a, like, here's what's going on right now that you can read this book, put the chapter down, or take this course and watch a video and, and finish it and then go out there and actually get results from it. I wanted to be able to give the marketplace something that 
got them immediate results like a lead or a sell, that way they'll be encouraged to continue to move the further through either the book or whatever. But most people say with my book, they, uh, they can't sit the damn thing down once they start uh, turning the pages. That they're like, dude, I had a guy message me the other day. He's like, I've read two books that got me in one sitting. He said, one of them was Nikki Six biography, and the other one was your book that I picked up the other day. That's so, how I've been. I mean, I, I, I picked up your books, and I mean, they're easy reads. They're easy to read. There's not a lot of... Uh, you know, there's not pages where you got to read five times to figure out what you're ta- they're talking about. You know, um, they're they're easy, good reads, and they're entertaining. And you talk about your life, and I mean, man, you've had you've had a lot of shit to happen. You you're a guy that one thing that I think is amazing is you've had every reason in the world to just quit, crawl under a rock somewhere, and disappear to, forever and work at Bojangles, you know, or Burger King, you know. I, I mean, you've had a uh, didn't work out for me. I, uh, I tried that, you know, I wanted to just be a car wash guy and, and wash cars for a living, and, and uh, damn it, somebody rescued and offered me a bunch of money to leave the car wash. <laughs> it wasn't in my, my cards, man. Uh, yeah, that's that's amazing. Well, you know, what, what what I wanted to talk to you about and what we kind of exchanged some messages about is this whole, um, you know, we've seen this whole situation with these guys from lab code agents go down and and you know for the people listening that don't um don't know about it, i'll give you the brief story basically they were on a bus at the inman conference they said some things about females and women that they shouldn't have a lady on the bus published a blog post about it then they come out and responded like they almost responded in donald trump type fashion um and then all of a sudden that blog post got shared like 2500 times and um you know like Things have really, really went wrong, and now they're like a hot topic. They're a hot topic on, on Facebook in the real estate world, man. And I, I wanted to ask you, you know, a situation like that, you've had situations that completely went sideways. What do you do when something like that happens? Like these guys from Lab Code Agents, what should they have done? Well, first of all, let's give a disclaimer here uh, to the people in your group. We might. You know, you're a nice guy, and uh, I can be when I want to be, but let's just use some real language to go through this. You understand the magnitude so they don't think that it's some uh, weak-ass thing that we're looking for offense on. I'm not offended by it, and I'll get into that in a minute, uh, but I can see why things went the way they did. See, I'll start it this way. In 2010, I decided to stop giving a fuck, and... What I meant was, I used to, all my life, want to keep my parents happy. I wanted to look good for my grandparents. I wanted to keep, you know, I was a banker. I wore a suit and tie to work. I didn't have tattoos that you could see that were visible like I do today. None of that. I went to church. I kept everybody happy at church. And I had so many secrets inside me, uh, like going to, I've been to prison, right? You've read the book. I've been to prison, and I didn't want to tell the people yeah. at church that because I didn't want them to judge me. I didn't want to tell other people, and it's not that I wanted to walk around and brag about it, but when people asked me where the hell I was for the last year and a half, I had to lie and tell them I was in some other state. I actually used to say I was in South Carolina because I had never been there. <laughs> people asked me questions. I was like, I'm going to go there one day, and I'm going to be like, hey, I've been telling people I've been here forever, <laughs> right? <laughs> so I didn't want to say I've been in federal prison. And so uh, 2010, I stopped all of that. I stopped all of it. I said, you know what? I am Ryan Stuman. I've been trying to be this other person, and it's gotten me in trouble. I've been to prison trying to be this other person. i got people in my life I don't want in my life and everything else, and I stopped. And I started just being me. And I cuss a lot. I'm from Texas. We cuss a lot down here. They bless, bless yeah. our hearts, right? And, and I, I, right. Smoke marijuana. Yeah, I smoke marijuana when I get a chance, and, uh, and I enjoy it. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I've fought for the legalization. I've been to jail for the legalization of it before, for the legalization. <laughs> and, and and I don't keep that as a secret. And I just got tired of, like, hiding all these secrets, and I started being myself on social media. And here's what happened. Yeah. First, people said, hey, Ryan, you shouldn't say fuck on social media. Hey, Ryan, you shouldn't call people pussies. Hey, Ryan, you shouldn't do this. Hey, you shouldn't talk about smoking weed. You shouldn't talk about this. You shouldn't be taking pictures of you and your buddies taking shots at the bar or you and your buddies going out in, in New York and doing crazy things in the nighttime and stuff like that. And I said, why not? We're doing it, and I'm not embarrassed of it. And there's nothing that I'm going to do that I wouldn't do in the middle of the public eye anyway, which is a good rule to live by. And so, yeah. and so pe- people, you know, they were really trying to get calm down. You need to be like, what happened to the 
guy that was in the box, did the church and all this other stuff. And I'm like, fuck that guy. And so <laughs> 2016 now, about 2013, people said, well, Ryan's like the hardcore closer guy. He doesn't give a fuck what you say. He's going to do his own thing. Yeah. Say, and if you don't want to hear him constantly, you might as well just get away from him. And people started that, that mantra. If, now, the reason why I tell you that story is we're in 2016 and nobody gives a shit who cusses online or anything else anymore. It's not the case. You're right. Uh, and, and, and I'm not going to say I spearheaded that, but me and Gary Vaynerchuk damn sure put a dent in the marketplace, right? And just showing people to <laughs> yeah. be ourselves, right? Between me and Gary, Gary's himself too. Like him or don't like him, it doesn't matter. He's himself. Same with me. Like me or don't like me, I'm myself. And so... I, with the lab coat guys, what they did, and I'll say this, they kicked me out of their group two years ago because I cussed. They, I would, they called me up and asked me, or they sent me a message, asked me to start contributing to their group. Say, you sent me a message. You said, hey, man, we start putting your blog posts and videos in my group. My people love your shit. And I'm like, hell yeah. Well, what happened was people started buying from me in there, and they asked me for money. And, I, dude, I'm still having to make some sales from in there. It's not like just money just comes to me. I'm still having to talk to these people and everything else. And they're like, yeah, of money. And I'm like, no, I'm not going to give you any money for this stuff. I have an affiliate program now, but back then, two years ago, I didn't. And I said, I, I yeah. don't know how to give you money for this, man. Y'all brought me in there to give value as a byproduct, to give value. I'm a fucking salesman, so I make sales. And uh, they kicked me out of the group overnight and told everybody in the group, blocked me from the group, told everybody in the group, they kicked me out because I was fouled to some of their members. Well, the only <laughs> members I was fouled to is the motherfuckers with their hand out that weren't doing anything, right? But you know, yeah. I wasn't able to defend myself or anything. They kicked me out of that group, and it is what it is. And that was actually about the time I started Sales Pro, yeah, the sales talk group. And I was like, you know what, man? It didn't have nothing to do with real estate, but I bet we didn't have a 1,000 people in that group when that happened. And I was like, these fools kicked us out. And so actually a lot of people from my group at the time you know, went over into lab coats and kind of ruffled those guys' feathers or whatever. So they, what they told yeah. me, the reason why I tell you this story is they told – uh, their group that they had kicked me out, not because I refused to pay them, right, but, it, but the, for the shit that they were wanting their hand out for their group because they didn't want people to know they were making money from their group. Uh, but they refused to, the, the, they kicked me out because I was using bad language to foul other members, right, which is complete bullshit. So it was funny to me uh, to see that these guys were fucking on the back of a bus saying things like, if that cunt cheated on me, i fucking strangle her out, whatever the hell they said. Right? Like, yes. these, are like, these three guys are fucking nerdy, geeky-looking dudes, right? There's like one guy that yeah. looks like he's a new member to the crew, and he's in good shape. The other two, let's just be real, these guys are nerds. And so yeah. uh, it, it's funny that they would even talk like that, but I can tell you what happened, and I can tell you two things that they, they can remedy it without going into gossip. First of all, a lot of people get, let's quote unquote, famous, right? I mean, if you've got 10,000, 20,000 people know who you are, you're famous. And of course. Uh, a lot more famous than anybody else. And, you know, it's, it's an example. I go, I'm having to explain to my kids all the time that, like, these strangers that come up to us in bars and restaurants and shit when we're out, like, I don't really know who they are. They know me. It's still a weird time for my kids, you know? Like, if a stranger calls your name and says, yeah. oh, you don't be his friend, you know? Man, I, I, I ran for public office in my little area, and I thought nobody really knew who I was, but I put up a lot of signs. I didn't win or anything like that. But, um, but man, I, I go to places in the middle of Myrtle Beach, and it, people know who I am, and it shocks me every time because I'm like thinking, okay, uh, how do you know me? What did I do to you? You know, <laughs> oh, what yeah. happened there? Hey, man, but yeah, you win that shit. Hit me up, dude. Yeah. I've gotten people elected before. Like, uh, I actually had a, one of the political consultants was one of my first coaching clients, man. Uh, so you want to start that over again, I can show you how you put the sign in front of everybody on Facebook as opposed to the road. That's a whole other thing. Yeah, I appreciate that, man. I was actually running as a write-in candidate in a special election. I just disagreed with our choices and disagreed what was happening. And I said, you know what, I'm going to get out there knocking on a bunch of doors and try to do something about it. And I, I mean, I, I got enough votes that I, I, I controlled the outcome of the election, and I was I was happy with the outcome, but um, I didn't win. But there hadn't been anybody to win uh, a significant office in the state of South Carolina since 1954, 1956 in South Carolina. So if I'd have won, it'd been a history making thing. But but anyway, it was a good experience. But man, it's like all of a sudden everybody knows me locally, and um, yeah, 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 you never know who knows you. It's so weird. But um, and these guys, I'm sure they were in that same position. They didn't know the lady at the front of the bus knew who all they know who they were. You know. 
Well, I think they did because here's the thing: like, real estate realtors are everywhere. So if you're famous, like, that's the thing with me. It's like I'm quote unquote famous in the real estate world, and there's realtors in every single market, in every town, everywhere. It's like one of the top professors, three and a half million of you guys. In the yeah. Alone, you know, and so they're everywhere. So if you're famous in that community, that is a big community to be famous in. And well, right. they were at an Inman conference, so people knew who they were, and they were in like this special. Uh, Inman thing, but here's the thing about these guys, and it would have never mattered. You see, I would never say something like that, and I'm not sitting here high and mighty, right? That's just not my first. I don't say mean shit about like that to people. I say some shit like, I'll whoop that dude's ass. Fuck that guy. Yeah, Fuck, him. Ass. Fuck him. You know what I mean? But I would never say that about a chick. That's not, that's not my mentality. I'm from the South. That's not how it works. And, and, but here's the thing. If those words had come out of my mouth, I don't think anybody would be fucking surprised. Just like when Donald Trump got caught saying, grab her by the pussy, nobody was like, well, I would have never thought that thing Donald Trump would say some shit like that. Everybody's like, I fucking knew it, <laughs> right? Like everybody, they, they weren't surprised. They were just like, finally, we caught the son of a bitch, right? Like they knew he was that Yeah, that's way. right. And yeah. So I, I, I mean, I, it didn't surprise me at all. And it didn't really sway anybody's vote, right? It really didn't. It pissed the Democrats no, off even more, anything. but it didn't really sway any Republicans. Even lady Republicans are like, hey, he's still our guy. And so the reason why I said it is because nobody was shocked. And when he got up there and he apologized for it, he just apologized that he got caught, basically. He's like, that's really the way I talk. That's locker room talk. And nobody wanted to hold him accountable that was on Team Trump because of the fact, not because they were offended or the shit that he said. Of course it wasn't right to say that shit or whatever the case. But they, did, they weren't surprised because he was fucking the guy on The Apprentice that said crazy shit, right? <laughs> and so it's yeah. the same with me. If those words would have came out of my mouth, nobody would be surprised. They would have just said, well, fuck, dude. You know, he's a little over the top sometimes. But these guys, the problem is, and the reason why people are so shocked and it made big news is because they carry themselves as these – Christian, upstanding, great community, charity giving, non cussing, community leadership people. You know, it's like when the when when Jim Bob down the street gets caught cheating on his wife, nobody gets too fucked. But if Reverend Brown gets caught cheating on his wife, it's a scandal for the whole city to deal with. You yeah, know what I mean? because Reverend Brown's supposed to be a certain way. Same with politicians; they're not supposed to be that way. So when they get caught doing that shit, you're like, dude, you lied to us. This isn't who you told us you were. And that's why I think that there's the big outrage with the lab coat agents. In the sales talk group, like I said, if this thing came up and it was the front page, most of the people in the sales talk group would go, dude, the guy talks about hookers and blow like three times a day. What the fuck are you surprised about? But I'm not trying to hide anything. And so that's the big lesson for everybody to take away here is if you just stop being one person online and another person in real life and you just become who you're supposed to be, then there is a period that's uncomfortable. It's like when you're growing your hair out. It looks kind of funny at a certain stage, right? There is a period where people are telling you to stop being yourself and go back into the box, and you're changing and all this. But once you get through that awkward period, then on the other side, less stress, better friends, better connections, people that aren't in some kind of... Oh, I agree with you. Because, because yeah. you're thinking, if you're fake and you're attracting other people in your life that are fake... Then the two of you get together and you tell your, each other's fake bullshit lie stories. Then your whole relationship's based on something that's not real. And so it's no surprise six months later when the two of you aren't friends or in a relationship or anything anymore because you just lied your ass off and ran out of lies to tell each other. Of course. Right? But if Man, it's authentic up front, it changes everything. Yeah, so many people respond better, and I, I think I, – I mean you're like that, and I'm kind of the, I'm the same way, and I think that's one of the reasons why people have responded so well to – to me and my group is because I, I don't really give a shit. I talk about the stuff that I want to talk about. I talk about, you know, I, I was divorced. I failed, man. I've tried a bunch of different things that didn't work. You know, I'm, I, the only thing I'm really good at is just going out and listing somebody's house and selling it. And that's that's my only real talent. You know, I don't mind telling people that. Hey, I'm not. <laughs> I am not this. I, my my CRM for uh, the last year or so was a spiral notebook, Ryan. You know, and um. <laughs> I mean, that's what I was using. I ever, you know, I had people contact me and go, "Hey, why don't you use? Why don't you tell people about my product or this product?" And you know, I'll pay you a referral. And I go, "But dude, I'm using a, I'm using a five subject notebook. I got really fancy because the one subject ones were too small." And um, you know, and I think people respond to everybody's more authentic. So, uh, so what you're saying is, if these guys would just been authentic to their, their following and their audience. Shit, and they'd have th- you know talked about whatever they're talking about anyway all the time. They wouldn't have had this problem. No, you know what? 
if they'd have been authentic to their audience the whole time, they wouldn't have had a fucking audience because if they sing that kind of shit, they're obviously fucked people anyway. But <laughs> yeah, you can't, you can't what, say instead, that. Instead, what they did was they, they became leaders, and the industry lifted them up, and then they revealed who they really were, and the industry has to really take a look at ourselves. We really do, people. We have to look at ourselves and go, who are these fucking people we keep making leaders that are dirtbags? Right? Yeah. Like, I, I, I mean, what does that say for us? We chose to follow somebody that we know we can look their numbers up and see they ain't selling shit. So how they got to become leaders in the real estate community is beyond me. You just told me you've done a million dollars in the last month in pearls alone. You're selling Oh, yeah. These other dudes, look at their numbers. They're on Facebook. Right? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's, hey, they're selling how-to courses. Nobody ever thought to verify. It's like a damn political race. Nobody ever thought to verify some facts and shit like that, and then everybody's surprised when we find out that these guys aren't who we thought we are, who we thought they are. But what we have to do as a community, as the real estate world, is we have to look at ourselves and go, why are we lifting these people that fail at real estate? The number one job people get when they fail at real estate is what? Real estate coaching. I shit you not. And so, like, we keep lifting up as a community these people that fail, and we don't check their numbers, and we just take their bullshit stories at face, at face value, and then we're surprised six months later when we find out that they can't sustain. Obviously, they can't sustain anything, or they'd still be slinging badass houses in, in, in uh, whatever You're right. town they're from and not, yeah. be, you know, spending their time making affiliate offers. You know, the reason why you don't need money from people in your group and CRMs and shit like that is because you sell them $2 million a month in real estate. I, I had somebody ask me, Ryan, he said, well, are you going to quit selling real estate and start coaching? And I go, no, shit, I make too much money. I can't afford to quit selling real estate. I mean, these guys coaching for 500 bucks a month and $1,000 a month, man, they're not yeah. making they're not making money. I can go do whatever I want to, and I'm not really tied down to, you know, five people on Friday to talk to them about how their business sucks or what they've done. But, um, but man, i got one quick question I want to ask you real quick. I know we only got a couple minutes left here. I don't, want to take up, I don't want to take up more time than what I promised. But, Ryan, what happens when you have an employee that says things like that? What do you do with that employee? How do you respond as a company? Like these guys, I mean, they work for a major franchise. They're getting all this negative attention. What do you do as a, a business owner? If one of your salespeople or independent contractors goes and does something like that, how do you respond to that? I've had that before. I have independent contractors that work for me, and I've had one uh, go out left and say some crazy shit about women. As a matter of fact, that seems to be a common thread, right? Uh, but about women on Facebook, I can't remember what he said. Something about rape, and it was really fucking uncool, like super fucking uncool. Uh, I don't get offended. I got thick ass skin, been to prison, all that shit, and I'm like, oh hell no, you gotta go, bro. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's exactly what I did. I just let him go, and uh, it was a big fiasco. Dude's, you know, threatening to come to the, the house and all that shit. Man, I got an armed security here, so I'm not worried about that. But, you know, like, there was, I mean, it was a rough deal, but I had to let him go, man, because here's the thing. If you don't let him go, then the world is just assumed, especially in this social media world, they just assume that you're okay with it. Yeah. Right? Like, if you, if you two kids, I have kids, right? You got kids. They go out, they get in trouble, the neighbor busts them and gets them in trouble and brings them over to the house and says, hey, man, I caught these guys stealing from Fred the neighbor's house over there, red-handed, here's pictures, I saw them do it, and the parent goes, oh, that's okay, Timmy, get in the house and don't do nothing about it. The neighbor's going to go, man, that dude steals too. The dad steals too, right? <laughs> yeah, no you're you right. That's okay. It it's it just like that blog post, man. I listened to that blog post the other day where you talked about how, how to know when to get rid of your friends. Yep. And, um, yeah, and I was like, shit, that is, uh, you know, people don't realize that, man. Sometimes you got to cut your friends go loose, and sometimes you got to cut your employees loose. But, but Ryan, I know I'm, I'm out of time here, man. So, but if somebody in my group and some of my audience wants to look, look at, they want to buy one of your books, they want to buy some of your other stuff, where do, where do they go? What do they do to find more out about Ryan Steumann and Hardcore Closer? Uh, well, the best thing you can do is uh, go to hardcorecloser.com. There is pretty much anything that you need there on that site. You can find me on social media there and everything else. Um, my stuff, my products, blog posts, there's thousands of articles and pages on that site. Knock yourself out. I've worked with Frederick Eklund. I was just with Josh Altman for about the fifth time uh, since he started being on TV, but I was just with him two weeks ago. I worked with Kendra Reese. I, I work with uh, Joshua Smith. I've worked with damn near every big name out there that you guys see that are actually producing. It's kind of like you yeah. the coaching side. My clients, 
sometimes they'll think, hey, I want to be a coach too. Ryan's job looks awesome. And then they'll hit me back up a month later and be like, why aren't you coaching anymore? Dude, I make too much money selling real estate. Why would I want to be a coach? That's an insane job. I'm like, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, you can hit me up on hardcorecloser.com. You can find all sorts of information about real estate, how to buy my products, how to become successful, and all of that. Man, I appreciate you having me on. Let me, uh, let me uh, not necessarily gossip, but let me like shed some light on something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on the way out, I think it's important that uh, we really do take a look at it, it, it ourselves as a community and figure out why we keep putting these people in leadership positions. I agree with you 100%. I really appreciate you, you being on here with me today, man. And I, I'll be honest with you, I could have I could have had five hours worth of questions for you. I didn't even tell anybody I was doing it because the one or two other people, one or two other people I told, they had like a list of questions for you. We didn't even get any of those, man. But I appreciate it, Ryan. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, catch you around, man. Later.